Hi, I'm Tom Zelenka. Now I'm just a beginner in the kitchen. In every episode of Carolina Cooking, I meet a different chef from a famous restaurant in the Carolinas Ooh. who'll teach me to cook their secret recipes mm. in just 30 minutes or less. Really good. Welcome to Carolina Cooking, shot on location at the mansion on Forsyth Park and the 700 Kitchen Cooking School. Now here's your host, Tom Zelenka. Hi, welcome to Carolina Cooking. I'm your host, Tom Zelenka. This is the show where you and I get to learn to cook together. I'm no chef. What we do is we bring the best chefs from the best restaurants all around North or South Carolina, and we bring them here to teach us their incredible recipes, and we get them done in 30 minutes or less. Today, we're making a seared ahi tuna with a ginger um, mashed potato and also a sauce, a wasabi sauce. Oh, it just it looks incredible. I'm sure it's going to taste incredible. And to help us out is Joe Shook from Key West Grill in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Joe, I appreciate you coming out. Thanks for having me. And so, uh, what is the sauce? The sauce is a wasabi mayonnaise and a fresh teriyaki glaze. Ooh, that sounds impressive. And this is the biggest cut of uh, tuna I have ever seen in my life. Is that uh, sushi grade tuna? It is sushi grade tuna and that's the size that we serve. Okay, and ginger mashed potatoes, right? Yes. Woohoo! Okay, where do we begin? We're gonna start with uh, making the mashed potatoes. So okay. We need to cut up these red potatoes here. I get a All couple right. over here. Okay. There's your knife. Yep. Oh, there's, you got your knife. You ever juggle? I don't juggle. You never learned to juggle? Oh, I could teach you something. <laughs> you could teach me how to make mashed potatoes. I could teach you how to juggle. The world would go around. It'd be a beautiful thing, you know, and then at the end, we'd walk off in the sunset. We'd roll credits. It'd be great. Oh, so we need to actually cut these. We do need to cut the potatoes. I gotcha. Okay. So uh, what are we cutting? What, what are you doing there? Um, just in quarters Sixes? or however you want to do it. The okay. smaller you cut them, the quicker they cook. Oh, okay. And how long do mashed potatoes usually take to cook? No, about 12, 15 minutes if the water's boiling. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. I think that'll be enough for what Is we need. Oh, okay. So not this one? That looks good. It fits right in our pot. So this one we just get to keep? You get to keep that one. Right. Take that back. Have it later. <clears throat> That's good. Okay. Now we're going to make a uh, wasabi paste, which we're going to make the wasabi mayonnaise out of. So ah. if you just put the uh, wasabi powder, which is very hot, the wasabi, into there. This wasabi powder is very yeah. hot? Smell it. I'll be the one to... Not, not, not terribly bad. bad. No, not mm -hmm. terribly bad. Yeah. So just pour this just in here? Pour all that in and just uh, add enough water to where it kind of turns just pasty but not okay. runny. Pasty but not runny. Alrighty. There you go. A little more water? Just a little bit more water. Okay. Ah, now it's burning the corner of my mouth. <laughs> all got on the spoon there. Now we're gonna we're gonna make the paste out of take the paste to make the mayonnaise. Oh, so we make the mayonnaise with the paste. So we're gonna do that a little bit later, right? And we're just gonna keep this. Yep. This is just making up the wasabi. Do you like wasabi? I do, mm. but not eating it like that. No, <laughs> it's a little warm. Actually, now maybe the water <laughs> activated a little bit. It's a little warm. A lot okay. warm. So um, <laughs> now what are we doing? Um, uh, we're going to wait for the potatoes to go uh, and okay. we can go ahead and get your tuna steaks ready. Okay, so these are tuna right here and this is sushi grade, right? Sushi grade ahi tuna. Now where did you, uh, you get this from a fishmonger? You get this at the local store? Uh, we have fish, different fish distributors wherever we get. Um, the best grade of fish that we can get at the best price. I okay. mean, it's just like shopping. But I can go to the store and get the, the one oh, yeah. in the uh, freezer there, right? Uh, you don't want to buy frozen tuna. No? Um, I mean, you can, but you can buy fresh fish at almost any okay. seafood market around. All right. Most grocery great. stores have it. Okay, all right. So what are we doing with the tuna? Are we... We're just gonna put it on the plate here. Okay, put it on the plate. I can do that. Roll it in some of the sesame seeds. Okay. And then we're gonna grind some black pepper over it. Oh. And what does the sesame do? Um, just the flavor. It just adds sesame flavor. Okay. Oop, that'll work. Got a little. Here, I'll get yours over there too. How much sesame do we That's want? That's plenty. This? Oh, sorry. Then I'll stop pouring. Okay. And are we gonna just get it all cr crammed on there? That'll be good. And then just uh, let's put some ground pepper on there as well. Okay. And now, with the world's largest pepper shaker, some ground pepper. 
This is your own personal one, isn't it? It is the restaurant. Oh, I see. All righty. Well, this is the one thing I can do. I could come down to your restaurant and do the, would you like some pepper with your salad? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Would you like some pepper with your salad? Because that's, I don't have any problem. Look, I even do the bang. The Did bang. you learn a Benihana? <laughs> yeah. So, there we go. Some crushed pepper. Is that enough or did you want a lot more on there? That looks good. Okay. That looks nice. nice. All righty, and we're going to be cooking that up in the next segment. Uh, also, we're going to be uh, letting our potatoes boil and making up some mashed potatoes when Carolina cooking continues. Mm. You can find the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas all in one book, the Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Find the Carolina Cooking Cookbook in Amazon.com and our website, carolinacooking.tv. Welcome back to Carolina Cooking. I'm here with Joe Shook from Key West Grill in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And our pan is smoking hot. It is very okay. hot. All right. So what we want to do is we want to put olive oil in the pan, being careful not to burn yourself. All right. I'm always try to be careful not to burn myself, but the hotter the pan is, the better it'll how sear. How much olive oil? Uh, cover the pan good. Oh, okay. That pan's extremely hot. Okay. That's good. Then you're going to place the tuna onto the pan. All right. Place the tuna on the pan. I'll grab the tongs here. Are we going to do both pieces? Mm, we can. Okay. Whew. Wow. There went some. Uh, Oh, easy, hey! All right, stand back, Joe, I'll protect you, don't worry. Okay. All right, you got it really hot, so you're gonna have to kind of watch it, but you can keep turning it so the sesame seeds don't burn. Okay. Already turn it? Mm, you can look at it and see how hot is that the pan is. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Oh, they're, the sesame seeds are launching off there, Joe. <laughs> I'm fighting back. Fighting back, Joe. All right. And so what we're doing is we're just trying to golden brown all this? Golden brown all the okay. way around, depending on right. how you want your tuna cooked. Okay. A lot of people like it rare, and just seared. Alrighty. And so that's why we use a ses or sashimi grade that's tuna. True. I gotcha. Whoo! Wow. So is it good, do you try to cook tuna all the way through, or do you it leave it? It depends on how you want it. Okay. Like we cook it to the temperature just like a steak. Ah, so there's a medium, medium, medium rare. rare. Well done. Rare Maybe. is the best way. Oh, okay. All right. Just keep turning it on all six sides. Oh. There okay. you go. Ooh, that looks good. That smells incredible. Is, is it normal for some of the sesame seeds to launch? Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's not only is it a good dish, it's a dangerous dish, too. <laughs> Could be. Right. So we have the olive oil in there, sesame seeds. All right. We might can start mashing the potatoes if you want. Sure. Is there anything else we need to put in this dish, or um, are we fine? We're just going to squeeze lemon over it. Okay. All righty. I'll flip it one more time, and then we'll go ahead and start working on our mashed potatoes. Okay. And mm -hmm. we're just going to mash these okay. with uh, butter. All right. White pepper. Do you, do I want them in this bowl? That'll right be here? fine. Yeah. Okay. So we'll set that out of the way. We're gonna put a pinch of white pepper in there. Pinch of white pepper, okay. And a pinch of salt. Pinch of salt, we have salt right here. And you, your fresh you ginger. There? This is like a ginger puree. A ginger puree? Yep. Okay, all of this? Um, no, just just a third of that. Okay, and do you buy it like this, or do you just puree you it? You can yourself? buy it, or you can buy ginger root and chop it or puree it yourself. Okay. Which we probably need to you need to turn your tuna oh. before it burns. Good call. Good call. I'll come back here. I think I have one more side. There you go. Uh. So look. Ow! 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 That. Ah. It's good to teach you who's boss, you know. Ah. There you go. All right, so we're gonna leave it like that. Should we yep. have had like maybe a fireman standing right over there off with? You the... could have. Okay, good, good. All right. So, do you want me to keep my eye on this? Keep or your eye on finish? that. Okay. And we're gonna turn the heat back down a little bit on All right. this. Okay. Since the pan's so hot, we're gonna finish it up with lemon and soy sauce. If you can go ahead and mash the potatoes, I think we'll be all right. Oh, okay. All right. So look, when we left, I put uh... a third of the ginger. Yep. Right and in there. And you want to put? Um, 
A couple tablespoons of butter in there. A couple of tablespoons of butter. Depending on how you like your potatoes. That's oh, good. Oh, I like butter. All right. And what about, do we need any garlic? Um, a little bit of garlic. A little bit of garlic. Okay. And then right. just mash all that together. Mash it all together. Now, my house I have a potato masher, but here we're stuck with a whisk. We okay over this? Stuff? We look fine. All right. Get back in there. All righty. And we keep the skin on. Why, why do we keep do that? Just for on. presentation? Presentation, the protein. Protein's okay. in the skin. Back in there. Okay. Is this good? Very good. Do I want to keep it from being lumpy? Mm, Am I just going for anything in particular and yeah. consistency? That looks pretty nice and consistency if you can get it out of the whisk. Oh, well, I don't know if that's going to be possible. There you go. Oh, just dump it out like that. I got you. Oh, oh. Okay. And tuna's still doing good? Tuna's doing good if you want to add some lemon to it. Mmm. Some lemon. Squeeze some fresh lemon. This lemon? That lemon. Okay. Squeeze that over the fish. Alrighty. I like how you already have these all already in a little... Keep what is that? seeds out of them. It's got a lemon wrap. Uh, this is a lemon wrap? That's a lemon wrap. What is this piece? Would I find it in the store as lemon yeah, wrap? Or? I've never saw them in the store. You can maybe buy some kind of... Uh, um, cheesecloth paper. Ah, I gotcha. It. So squeeze the lemon. And a little bit of soy sauce, and then we're going to make the wasabi soy mayonnaise. Soy sauce, okay. Pour just pour fish. it on over top? Yep, just pour a little on both of them. Whoo! That smells incredible there. Then we're wow. going to take your wasabi paste. Okay. Whoop. Mix your mayonnaise. Hang on, let's make some room. Some wasabi paste that we made earlier. It's somewhat hot. Not the hottest. It makes a little sugar in with it. Sugar? Really? I mean, sugar. Some soy Why? Why sugar? Uh, it cuts down some of the hot hotness. How much soy sauce? Okay. And then um, How put much? about half of that mayonnaise in there. Half of the mayonnaise. Okay. And just mix it up really good. Okay. Then we'll put it into a bottle. In a bottle and we'll squeeze, squeeze it out? Up, squeeze it on. And this is kind of our garnish or? It is, a garnish okay. and a sauce. Am I supposed to make it smooth? Yes. All right. And now is our tuna done? The tuna is done, it's about medium. Okay. And there's a couple of lumps in there. Is that okay? Um, it probably needs to be smooth. Ooh. okay. Probably can use a, uh, a food processor or a blender to do as well, but you're really coming along pretty good there. Alrighty. And how do we know that our tuna is done? Um, you can neither feel it. Feel um, it? You can feel the firmness of it. Okay. Um, is that, what, what would you call that firmness? I'm saying it's about medium from medium? what we've cooked it. Okay. And done would be firmer to the touch? Done wouldn't, it wouldn't push down yet. It'd be okay. more solid. And a uh, rare would be rare, yeah. rare would be like a good you could push down yes. into it pretty well. Okay. All right. All right. I think we're ready to plate up. All right. Well, when we come back, I'm going to talk to Eris Ragazayas and find out which wine he has paired with our tuna. From Carolina cooking continues. Oh, lumps! I hate lumps. You can find the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas, all in one book, the Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Find the Carolina Cooking Cookbook in Amazon.com and our website, carolinacooking.tv. Welcome back to Carolina Cooking. I'm here with our wine expert, Eris Ragazayas, in the wine cellar at the mansion on Forsyth Park. And Eris, we're making up a tuna steak. We're putting on some mashed taters. We're also putting a little Don King on top at one point, but uh, that's that's not, that's a little bit later on. Looks so great. which wine did you pair with a Don King tuna? 
I think I got an interesting wine for you today. Okay, already. This is from the Loire Valley in France, from, mm -hmm. from a producer, Remy Panier. Okay. It's from the Vouvray region. Vouvray region? Of That's France. not the wine? No. Uh, the French generally call their wines by the region, not the grape variety. Okay. So this is from the region of Vouvray, which is in the central part of the Loire Valley. Now, if I'm a little, you know, uneducated about wines, I'll admit, and there's some yellow stuff on top there. Where's the foil that usually goes around these? This things? is this is a wax seal rather than a foil seal. A uh, wax seal. Yeah. Some. This is this is just the, at the discretion of the, of the producer. Rather than put oh. a foil around it, they just drop a little wax on there to seal the uh, cork. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's this, interesting. It, it, it is makes it, it a better easier. or worse than foil, or no, just no real no, difference? No, it's just another way of doing it. It okay. makes it a little easier to open it because you just yeah. you just dig right through the uh, wax and yeah. just pull the cork out. Okay. Uh, now, while it doesn't say it on the label, as most French wines don't, this is made from a grape which a lot of people call the Rodney Dangerfield of grapes. The Rodney Dangerfield yeah. of grapes because it gets no respect. Yeah, it can't get no respect. <laughs> the grape variety here is Chenin Blanc. Okay. And in, in Vouvray, probably the world's greatest Chenin Blanc is made. Uh, very ripe fruit flavors like green apples and melons and very high acidity, which in Vouvray they balance off with just a little bit of residual sugar to give it a nice little mm -hmm. sweet and sour one-two punch. You're definitely getting melons. Um, I'm not sure about sweet apples, but I'll take your word for it. Green apple. Mm. Very, very nicely done. Tart, but just a little bit yeah. sweet on the edge. Yeah. The reason why I say it gets no respect is because in its dry version, it never makes a really great wine that the connoisseurs are going after. Okay. But the winemakers love it. The growers love it, and it's widely planted. It's one of the most widely planted grapes in the world. So where does it all go? Into blends? It usually goes into blends. Most people don't realize that, that there's acres and acres of it planted all over California. Mm -hmm. Most of it finds its way into, into the generic blends, and the growers love it because it always produces a wine with good fruit and good acidity almost no matter where it's planted. Well, I, I, I got to tell you, I like this one. This one is a good wine to me. I appreciate you telling me about it, and I'll look for the bottle on the shelf. And I've got to get back and finish up my plate when Carolina cooks. You can find the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas all in one book, The Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Find The Carolina Cooking Cookbook in Amazon.com and our website, carolinacooking.tv. Welcome back to Carolina Cooking. Uh, we finished up our sauce here and now we're just putting in our little ketchup bottle, mustard bottle here. It's definitely an easier way. Really? Dump it all here on this saran wrap. Alrighty. This is a homemade pastry bag. Ah, oh, I got gotcha. you. Wow. All right, all on there. So if you don't have a little bottle at home, you can poke a little hole in here maybe to garnish. Okay, here, let me grab it. So you just keep the pressure there? Keep the pressure. Okay. Got to be careful to poke that hole in there. So you can just poke a little. Whoop. And then you can, You well, can garnish like that, but it works so much better if you have a bottle. So it's you can also use this, what, to squeeze it into the yeah, bottle Yeah, you can. Ah, look at that. Now that's nice. Woohoo! Now it's time to put everything together here. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll throw that over there. And what gets to go in where? Well, you're gonna put the mashed potatoes on the plate first. All right. I can do that. Mashed potatoes. Just kind of stay to one side a little bit. Mashed potatoes to one side. Can a little a off center? A little bit. Yeah. Just a okay. little off center. Right. Leave them high, piled high. Piled high. Gotcha. Okie dokie. Is that enough mashed potatoes? That looks good. Then okay. you're going to place one of the tunas on there. We're only going to put one on there. Okay. One on top? Yep. Now that looks incredible. And the crew commented during the break at how incredible the soy sauce smelled when, when we threw that on there. It really is going to taste good. No, you're going to put a little of the wasabi mayonnaise right across the top of the tuna. Just as a, like a poof? Uh, a couple of those lines across the top. Okay. And so, a couple of lines across the top, just bloop, bloop, yep. bloop, okay. A little just zig. pretty much just the tuna, day. Okay. There you go. All right. And then we're going to garnish the plate. Garnish Which the you can plate. do it fancy, like this. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then do you need any more spots? Yeah, might... Let's see this right here. Okay. 
Can I do one? Yeah, sure. Just putting a dot in Just the Just put a dot in it, and then we're going to make okay. a design in it. And how do you make the design? You take the knife and you just run it around. It makes nice little hearts. Ooh, or you could decorate nice. the plate in any way, fashion that you wanted. Oh, okay. And put some different colors in oh. it. Can I do the white? Yep. And you're going to put alfalfa sprouts on the top that look like a little chia pet. Smile. Okay. And alfalfa sprouts on the top. Make Use a lot. Okay. It looks nice. All right. There you go. There we go. Or it could also look like Don King. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And then okay. you're gonna garnish with parsley and peppers. Parsley. Carrots. Peppers. Just sprinkle all over them, imagine. Oh, yeah. Some carrots. And now we gotta see how it tastes. Now that does actually look like Don King. You notice once you put the carrots on. Garnish there. with your lemon. Okay. Let me get your glass here. Some nice white wine. We'll go ahead and give it a taste and feel free to pick up a fork. A fork. Pick up a fork and dig in all right and see what you think of the tuna that we have created here mm -mm -mm. Gonna get a little here mm. that's good to find out more about our wine our recipe to find out more about our chef or the restaurant visit us at www.carolinacooking.tv i'm tom zelenka and that's carolina cooking good job Cheers. that's incredible that's really good Go to carolinacooking.tv for the recipes featured on this show. Plus, on carolinacooking.tv, you'll find more information on the wine, chefs, and foods of Carolina Cooking. That's carolinacooking.tv. Carolina Cooking is filmed on location in 700 Kitchen Cooking School at the Mansion on Forsyth Park Hotel in Savannah, Georgia. For details on their hands-on cooking classes, call 888-711-5114 to book a class.